bit of an update on where we're at with things. Um, if you've seen the previous video about the heater or the heaters, then uh, you'll know that we took them out of the car. Um, one of the things that I'm currently doing, if we come around here, is removing rust from um, from the heater box. So uh, that's in rust remover. Um, what I'm actually uh, <laughs> what I'm actually trying is vinegar to remove the rust. So um, I've previously used kind of you know rust removers. Uh, the problem, the, well, the biggest problem with those is just the amount that I needed to to get the heater boxes. Um, submerged so I'm actually using vinegar which is about tenth of the price of, of um, rust remover uh, it's, it's about a pound a litre no yeah pound a litre um, so I bought 20 litres of uh, spirit vinegar I think it is or white vinegar uh, and I'm seeing and it seems okay the only problem is it's been so cold recently that I've put um, I've actually put a, a tropical fish tank heater in there to warm it up so the whole garage stinks of vinegar which I like vinegar but not all the time in the garage anyway um, so uh, you've seen that um, the heat is out of the car uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually uh, while while the rust remover is working um, which seems vinegar is a little bit slower than rust remover, but um, it, it is working slowly. So um, what I'm going to do is get on with the fuel pipes and the, the reserve tap. Um, the reserve tap is under the car. Um, so I'm going to, I've got a new one of those, new old stock one of those. It kind of works at the moment, but it's very stiff. Um, maybe I'll rebuild it. I don't know. I'll see. But I, I saw one on eBay, new old stock. Um, so I got that so I'm going to fit that and also replace the fuel pipes because although I replaced the fuel pipes in the engine bay the fuel pipes um, from the tank to the reserve tap uh, and then from the reserve tap towards the engine bay are actually original so um, what I'll do is I'll just show you in the boot uh, the fuel pipes and then I'm going to get on with starting to remove them remove the uh, reserve tap and then start replacing them while the rust is is coming off the heater boxes also need to send the um the uh, matrices off to get reconditioned so i'm going to do that uh, while they're out of the car as well and also rebuild the motor if you've seen the previous videos anyway let me show you the uh the the, the fuel tank right so we're in the boot of the car um this is the fuel tank here uh, which is for the age of the car is well you know for, for when the car was designed it's pretty good location um, sometimes they were under the boot floor and obviously that's quite susceptible to, to splitting if there's a rear end shunt um, Rover quite sensibly located it up here which is uh, quite a nice kind of feature safety feature um, so there are multiple pipes um, so this is the filler here uh, this is the filler neck this pipe here is the return loop from the engine so um, the fuel in the engine goes to through the fuel pump to the first carburetor then onto the second carburetor and then from there uh, the spill return loops back so this is actually the return pipe um, I am I think it's only copper so far and then it becomes a uh, fuel pipe so I'm going to replace that um, I'll probably keep the copper um, it seems in pretty good good condition I might just replace that short piece as well and then that loops up into the um, the tank for the spill return this pipe here is the breather and there's actually two there's one you, you may not be able to see this side um, let's see if I can get some light up there so there's actually two breathers they come together up here and then they kind of go around a loop and then down and out and that just vents out the bottom of the car through a grommet so that's okay it's it's seems like rover used a very stiff plastic pipe for for the fuel system um 
but anyway, I think the breathing, you know, that's okay. It should should be just fuel vapor, but it all looks in pretty good condition. Um, you you may be able to see the the sender connections up there. That's okay, um, in fairly good condition. And then these two pipes are the the fuel uh, the fuel pipes. They both go into a pickup. One of them is lower down in the fuel tank than the other, so one of these is the reserve pickup or pipe, and the other one is just the normal. Um, I don't really know. Well, I do know obviously why they did it. Um, I guess you know if if you started to run out of fuel, then you just pull the reserve lever, and you've still got another gallon or so of petrol. Um, but it's not like a separate tank or anything. It, it's just a lower pickup. Uh, so, so these two are, I think, are original Rover pipes. I mean, they they look okay, um, but they are very hard. That just seems to be almost like nylon or, or some sort of plastic uh, pipe. Um, very hard. Anyway, I'm going to replace these. Also, these go through. I'm not sure if you can see. These go through the boot floor here, and um, there's actually no grommets on those which isn't great as well um, and these then go to the reserve tap and then from the, the reserve tap there's a single pipe going uh, to the engine so um, I haven't done I, haven't, I need to tidy up the boot um, I, I've vacuumed it out it's actually the first time since I bought the car that I've really emptied the boot fully um, it was a lot of muck, there was a little bit of surface rust, but um, nothing terrible. Um, the tank's in pretty good condition, as you'd expect, it's not exposed to, you know, under the car. Um, so I think the tank is fine. Uh, there's normally a, a, a board that goes here that covers this. Um, I've taken that out and there's also boards on either side of the, the, the uh, boot and a a rubber mat which I may get a carpet torn the rubber mat is so I'm, you can get a carpet a fitted carpet for the floor I may do that so um, what I'll do is I'll just show you the reserve tap under the car and then first thing is to slacken these so that we don't siphon fuel out the tank um, and then I can start um, removing the uh, the reserve tap and the cable to the to the reserve lever inside the car um, and start just removing the old fuel pipes and then um, put it back together right we're under the car <coughs> so this is one of the um, the cross members this is the, the handbrake rod which uh, we reconditioned in a previous video um, these are the two pipes coming from the fuel tank um, this one and this one and you may not be able to see but there's a, a tap there uh, switches between these two and then the pipe here goes off to the engine and again that's original um, pretty you may be able to just see it there um, uh, that's all original um, the the cable which uh, I'm not sure if you can see that the cables pretty rusty quite stiff the lever it does work but um, it's quite stiff so um, I'm going to replace the the tap and the pipes basically um, I think that's about all to say um, I don't know if you can see these two pipes these are the two pipes going to the rear heater um, so they're going to be replaced when we uh, replace the heater um yeah, that's about it so i will get on with i'm going to slacken the, these two pipes at the fuel tank so we don't siphon petrol out and then start removing these and uh see how we go it's pretty getting these off these pipes off is going to be interesting because it's pretty hard so i think they're going to have to be cut uh anyway let's see how we go
Hello again. So things have been a little bit quiet for the last couple of weeks. Work had to take priority, unfortunately. Didn't have a lot of time to work on the uh, the heater and the car. But um, the other thing is that uh, the heaters, I'm still working on stripping and repainting them. So it's not very exciting uh, to show on video. But we are making some progress and I'm um, going to rebuild the motor a little bit later as well, the rear heater motor. So um, while I'm doing the heaters, I'm also replacing the fuel pipes. The um, fuel pipes were original and uh, they were in need of replacing. Um, so uh, I'm getting on with that. Um, I'm just going to show you under the car. So we're under the car, uh, there's the rear axle, so we're looking backwards, this is the the boot floor um, here, um, and you can see hopefully uh, some fuel pipes, so the, there are, so this is a, the breather or overflow, um, I've had to make a new bracket for that, the bracket, in typical rover fashion they don't just stick it through the floor with a grommet they actually have a bracket holding it um, to there uh, so I've had to make a new bracket the other one basically had rusted through then um, put new grommets through the floor the old ones were pretty much shot and I'm just starting to run new fuel pipe I'm using uh, gates barricade fuel pipe 5 sixteenths um, and there's two pipes I'll show you the the old ones in a minute these come from the tank uh, one is the reserve pickup and one is the normal pickup so they then go to the reserve tap that switches between them and then there's a single pipe going from the reserve tap to the engine so um, this is really quite awkward because um, uh, well I've jacked the car up a fair amount but I should have gone higher really uh, so there's not a lot of room under here uh, hence as well I haven't shown you that because it wouldn't be a lot of fun because it's, it, it's painstakingly slow trying to get to everything but anyway so I think I've got everything off there are um, if you can see this bracket here the fuel pipes clamped to that um, and then they run forwards along the sill to the fuel, uh, the, the reserve tap. So these are the two pipes that I've removed from the car. Uh, if we start at this end, this is the end that goes to the tank. I've cut one of the uh, connectors off and the other one's on. Um, these are the original pipes. I don't know if they're nylon. They're very hard. Um, I think they're like that from the factory, but I, you know, 50 years old um, and using modern fuels, I wanted to replace them. Uh, I can't remember the clear one, maybe the reserve. I don't know. I can't remember which way around they go. Um, but I'll just show you where they go on the tank. So here's the petrol tank in the the back in the boot. Um, both of the pipes attach to this pickup here and then that goes down into the tank um, so you can see this is the other end of that uh, fuel pipe that I'm just starting to run these are the grommets this is the overflow um, I need to seal around that a little bit better that that grommet was original um, these ones are a better fit um, so there's going to be the two pipes going down to the to the fuel filler tap. So if we just look at that, so that's those pipes. They come forwards, um, and that's about where they clip, just above the axle. Then they come down, run along the sill, and then turn towards the middle of the car. And then this is the reserve tap. Um, it sits in the car that way I think yeah so it screws to a bracket um, with a nut on this thread um, you can see sorry about the shaky cam this is the cable operated valve it's like a ball valve I think inside um, so these two pipes are coming from the fuel tank and then that one goes off to the engine. Um, again, you can see these are the original 
pipes they're just really um, a push fit onto a barb the barbed connectors obviously it's worked well for 50 years um, I'm probably gonna have to reuse some of these connectors and, and clean them up um, well, that one looks quite pitted but difficult to get these are 5 sixteenths compression fittings which are not the easiest things to find I've got some actually I've got re replacement straight ones I'll show you them um, what I can't find is a 90 degree elbow like this one so I'm gonna have to reuse that one but I have got brass replacements of these um, I'm, I'm gonna replace the cable as well because I think it's original um, I've got one of those on order from from uh, our favorite supplier so yeah so that's the, the pipes out of the car the two two of them anyway um, right so this is so we're in the garage different workbench um, in case you get confused we're going to be in the other in the workshop in a minute doing the, the motor um, so this is the the end of that overflow pipe that you saw sticking out under the car it, it had snapped off and this was the bracket that was bolted um, under the car it rusted I mean it hadn't fully rusted but it, it was very weak there so uh, I've just made up a stainless steel bracket from um, a p-clip large p-clip and got any strips of stainless so I've just made that up uh, to hold the new end of the pipe and that'll bolt in place so that should last um, so that's been replaced uh, these are some of the the fittings so you can see here I've slipped this pipe off that these are the original compression fittings they they're fairly well barbed and the original tubing fuel pipe just um, clipped on I don't know if you noticed on the one that's on the ground the the original ones um, one of them I think had cracked and someone had put a length of, of normal pipe over it about that long and Jubilee clipped it so um, I mean these are pretty and not very flexible I don't know I assume they're probably like that from the factory but they may have been more flexible 50 years ago um, but I just thought I'm gonna get you standard um, fuel piping and use uh, Jubilee clips to hold these on um, so I, I can reuse a lot of these fittings some of them are in not in bad condition just needs cleaning up a bit um, these were the clips that um, hold the fuel put the two fuel pipes coming from the tank under the car to the sill and under the axle all very rusty um, these screws I think the this is one of the ones that goes into the sill amazingly I mean that I, I chewed them up getting them out but I didn't they didn't break off quite amazing and also the thread actually for being in the sill uh, is surprisingly unrusty I mean it's a bit rusty but I I thought these would be absolutely you know part of the sill by now um, but yeah not too bad so I managed I had to break a couple of the clips to get the screws out and get get some mole grips on because the the screw heads uh, were slipping but they didn't break so I've got all the screws out uh, I'm gonna use P clips stainless P clips instead of these you can't actually get well the the, the gates um, fuel pipe that I'm using is 15 millimeters outside diameter these are too small anyway um, so I'm gonna use um, just P clips like this sort of thing um, which fit around the fuel pipe so yeah they're gonna basically I'm gonna use two of these kind of back to back kind of like that to hold the, the pipe uh, instead of that as I say can't get those are the right size you can get you can get ones for probably probably this original size I'm not sure what the outer diameter of that is but um, you can get them for that sort of size but um, the this fuel pipe is much thicker wall as you can see same internal diameter but thicker wall 
So this is the new uh, fuel tap. Um, I think this is new old stock off eBay. Um, so it mounts in the car. There's the nut. Just remove that. So I'm, I'm going to. That's one of the ninety degrees. But, so this is the nut that you mount it to that bracket with, uh, and then the cable moves it and it's just a ball valve uh, diverting from between these two out and that goes out to the engine so or I think it's that way around those two from the fuel tank and that's to the engine so pretty simple um, I could maybe use the original I think you can get new o-rings for the original but um, I found a new old stock one on eBay and thought I may as well use that so, that, so I'm going to fit that as well um, as you can see I've got various uh, I, I've been trying to find some replacement fittings um, you can get elbows but not with the uh, the female thread on them so I'm not going to use those and new olives as well um, where needed um, it's it's you know th th these fittings are all imperial so uh, not the easiest things to find but um, that was on the old grommets that the fuel pipe went through I don't know if that was original but certainly looks of the right vintage so those have been replaced as you saw um, I think that's it um, yeah so ne what I'm going to do uh, next I think is I I'm probably not going to bother uh, next thing to do is fit this and then run the pipes probably not going to start that now but what I will do is get on with rebuilding the rear heater motor. Actually, while we're here, that was the repair that I mentioned. So I assume the original pipe got damaged and someone just stuck a normal piece of fuel pipe in. Um, obviously that's not Bob, so that could pull off, pull off, but it's just all very um, well, old. So um, all gonna get replaced. Just to update you before we get into the heater motor as well. Um, so we had a package come from our favourite supplier. Uh, these are the new or reconditioned heater matrices. This is the front one uh, with a new core. They're looking very nice. So that will be fitted in once I've reconditioned the, the, the box or whatever it is. This is the new rear one. As you can see, it looks copper. Copper fins looks very similar to the. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's got copper fins which the original one had. This is obviously been recored. Uh, again, looking very, very nice. So that these will be going in once I've got the the heater units reconditioned, uh, which hopefully will be a week or two. Well, actually, no, it'll be it'll be next week because um, I'm taking a week off work, which will be nice. So I can get on with some work. Now, the other thing that came was the the heater valve. So this is the the valve that lets uh, that that this is the original one that lets warm water into the front matrix. This sits just on the the outside of the the black box that, that, that the air goes through and the matrix sits in. This is the original one. Uh, I was going to use the original one, but it looks as though it's been opened already. So I thought for for the sake of, I can't remember, 30, 40 pounds, I think, um, I bought a shiny new one. Um, I'm, I may keep that as a spare. Um, this is, apparently a drop-in replacement you can see it's very very similar I mean the the actual body looks the same um, it's slightly different end on but actually all the the, the connection points um, if you see ugh, right so the cable comes in there that grips the outer of the cable same there um, this is the the actual 
valve and again same there so uh, in terms of function they look to be identical um, and in terms of connections they look to be identical as well as I, say, I just thought I may as well this one has been opened the the rivets been snapped off and um, looks like this can twist and come out these are bent to grip the, this part of it um, I don't know why so you know someone's fixed it already so it, 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 yes, I'm not going to throw it away but um, I thought I'd get a new one so that's gonna go in then the other thing we've done is reconditioned the the motor so um, this is the well, that's the bracket for that so this is the the internals of the motor um, I've got rid of all the rust uh, just painted this I've just hand painted this bit um, everything else looks good I've checked continuity the windings all seem okay so that can go back in um, casing I've removed all the rust dipped them in um, evapor rust I think I used which is expensive but it does work well uh, you can see some of the pitting from the rust all the rust is gone but um, I've resprayed that fan was fine um, the other parts that I've reconditioned so various this is what the motor sits in under the car um, various bits of the heater box I've started to spray as well so it is some progress just never as much as you you want so um, what I need to find is the other end of the motor casing where is that I'll be back in a minute. Right, that's better. Found the end cap. Also found my microphone, which is handy. So, first thing um, I want to do, I think, is the original um, cabling comes out of this hole here, and there was a, just a single grommet in there. What I want to do or plan to do is use grommet like this uh, strain relief grommet it fit in the hole really nicely I'm going to silicon it in as well I'm going to use silicon in various places here I mean the original hadn't leaked that much I thought it'd be in much worse worse condition having been under the car for 50 years but um, so I can't really criticize the original ceiling but I just thought I would use silicon uh, to seal parts of this um, just to improve it. I mean I am going to once it's back in the car I'm going to um, as Rover did cover it with under seal um, spray on under seal just to seal it another kind of seal layer of seal but I am going to use silicon as well on this um, so those are the two end caps we've got the the brush and um, coil winding assembly. Uh, the armature I've cleaned up a little bit. Um, it was generally in good condition. The only rust is on the very end of the uh, the shaft which is where the uh, that's actually the highest point as well bizarrely. Um, that's where the fan goes on. Um, it, it's I mean the actual bearing surface is fine it's just where the fan um, grips the, sh the, the, the armature so not a major problem I've cleaned it up as much as I can again I've tested this for continuity and it all seems fine so um, it should go back together these Smiths motors are pretty standard the, they all have uh, phosphor bronze oil light bushes in the ends they're not bearings and they're in a kind of cage they're kind of spherical the outer uh, part of the bushing is spherical 
and they sit in this kind of sprung cage so they can if I put that in there they can actually move uh, to take account I assume of any misalignment in the bushings I've not seen that before on a motor um, but as I say it did seem to be a standard way that um, that Smiths did things so um, you don't have to worry too much I mean I've Bushes look fine, can't see anything wrong with them. Um, just trying to think the best way to put this together. So I think... Yeah, so that's going to go on there like that. So I'm put the motor in there. Then... I haven't had a practice run with this, so hopefully I'm not going to have to take it all apart again and do something wrong. Um, So what I plan to do then, the I think the original motor had some like sheet, the PVC sheath over this, um, because this goes under the car and goes up, comes up through the floor to uh, connect a block. Um, so I'm going to put some PVC sheath and uh, it'll it'll basically um, I'll seal it onto this, uh, so it should be pretty watertight as I say the original the original uh, oh, this is it so this is the original grommet as you can see it's got two holes for one for each cable amazingly that kept out the water for 50 years or most of the water um, but it's quite hard it's gone a bit hard and it just seems a little bit I don't know lightweight for, uh, for for sitting under the car. This this has a bigger flange on it, um, and uh, and it's got this bit. So I, I think this is going to be better to seal. But as I say, can't really criticise the original because it lasted fifty years. So. So this goes together. actually I keep hitting my head on the camera there is actually I've noticed um, small indent there it's barely barely noticeable don't know if it shows up um, I think yeah there's one on this casing oh oh, oh no okay so there's two <laughs> I thought there were light marks to line up line things up uh, and there might be one there as well. So okay, I thought there were things to line up. I think anyway. Um, there's a sl small notch in the winding, so I think probably that would make sense because the wires then line up with this uh, grommet as well. Um, so I think that will. Yeah. It went in easier than I thought. Yeah, and then the... Oh uh, no, actually. So these, these the screws need to come through the laminate. Uh, that doesn't line up with that, interestingly. That needs to, so that doesn't line up with that. Oh, 
I need to rotate that slightly. And there you go. And we'll go through. I think there's still some rust inside the laminations, but couldn't. Uh, couldn't get everything out. So that is that is that. Um, don't want too much wire. Inside flapping about. Um so that's the first bit. As I say, these screws come in and then there are these spacers. Not sure which way around they go, doesn't look like it matters. The spacers go through there. Oh, uh -huh. I know what I haven't done. I haven't put the little thrust washer on the end. Take that out. So what there is is are these small uh, washers that go on the end of the each end of the armature. Um, I have five. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put three on the bottom because that's where the weight of the, the motor will rest on this this end. This sits this this is up. Um, so I'm thinking if I put three on that end, so, let's see, so that went up in that cap. It's just a paper insulator. Um, Yeah, I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. I don't have bits left over. So, okay, let's try that again. Bedded in all around. Um, again, just pull some wire out, cable out so that it's not flapping about inside. in uh, 
か。probably want to do before I do that is get the brushes in the the brush hole and tell you what I'm gonna I'll put these both of these screws in interesting this one sits in a hole this one sits in a slot um, no idea why but that must be the way around it is I haven't uh, haven't twisted this at all the cables wouldn't allow it right so now I've got that in I want to get these brushes in um, So these are the springs. Okay, so these are the springs. brushes in this is where you need three hands I could try and clip these hold these back with tape or something if Okay, I think those brushes are in. And they are 
Ona kamitajta. Right, so that's that. Now, next thing is, I think, ah, right, so this is where, so, interestingly, so, um, I hadn't really noticed this when I took this apart. Uh, all the springs just fell out. So those go on like that. And then those, the other end of these springs just sit against the, the inside of the, the casing. So basically the brush assembly is able to move slightly. Um, again, I don't know, I've not seen that in a motor before, but um, these springs are basically pushing this this brush plate down, but it could move slightly against the pressure of the spring. Um, yeah, just an interesting thing that I've not seen in a motor before. Um, it's going to put these thrust washers on. Do the other, the other way around. Mm -hmm. Let's put that one on first. That's the, the kind of springy one, and the normal one. Okay, so. So in theory, brushes move, okay. Yeah, so I think that's it. Um, I guess we should put this back in. I don't really know what that's for. Um, Oh, 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 it's to stop, maybe it's to stop these brush wires touching the case, or, or well, or any of these wires. So that's, that, that does want to go back in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make a new one of these, because this is very floppy. Actually, I wonder if that was stuck in there. Maybe it was originally. Hard to tell, but that side does look a bit shiny. All right, actually, what I'm going to do... So I've got this um, fish paper. Um, so this is, this is like fish paper, but thick. What I'm going to actually do is use, I think, this adhesive fish paper and um, stick it inside there I think so I'll just cut this out and then I'll bring you back Right, it's a bit more, a bit less floppy than this, very thin, this is like thick paper or 
card should yeah so I'm going to stick this inside there uh, I have a feeling that was probably stuck in because it's very odd it's just flapping about in the wind it doesn't seem right but I can see that obviously all of this is exposed and you've got the metal casing here so you don't want that to short out going to be better than it was anyway. I think I bought this fish paper when I rebuilt the, the wiper motor because there's a similar, well different place but it's used in there. Um, it's called fish paper. I have no idea why it's called fish paper, but it's basically an electrical insulating paper. Um, kind of slightly waxy feeling. It must be impregnated with something. I don't know what, but it seems to be called fish paper. Right. So there you go. That's at least that's not flapping about. So I think now we are ready to put this on. I don't think there's any particular orientation. Well, it goes to bed together a lot easier than it came apart. What I'm going to do, I think, just before I... Yeah, I don't know where the original nuts are. Anyway, I think before I... Um, put the nuts on and tighten it down, I'm just going to check that it does work. So, uh, give me a minute. volts or thereabouts make sure it is roughly together feels free enough let's try it there you go It's drawing 2 amps, 1.89 amps at 12.4 volts. That's down at... That's 6 volts. You can probably hear it's still just running. It's four volts, so yeah, so twelve volts exactly, that's one point eight. 
five amps drawing. Okay, success. Seeing as last when um, we took it out of the car and I tried to do that, nothing happened. So it's definite improvement. Um, so I'm going to just get some some, some bolts and uh, put the, on there. Um, then I need to. I'm going to run silicon around here and around the two either side of this plate. Um, I may put some silicon around those screws as well. And that should then be pretty well sealed, but I am going to spray it with um, kind of uh, under seal when I put it in the car as well, which is what Rover had done. Uh, right, so, so that, so I'll, I'll get some screws in a minute. So that then is going to sit in this. So um, what I need to figure out is how to, I'll have to look back at the video when we took it apart because thinking about this the, the other day, um, this had grommets like to, cause you, you want to kind of insulate this vibration from the car body. So this had grommets. Um, but then I'm not sure how, what's sealing that then? What's stopping water? Because if, if that's sitting off that, what is stopping water getting in to there? Seems kind of odd. I think there was a foam gasket somewhere, although a lot of it had disintegrated. I need to figure that out. The grommets aren't a problem and I can just put bolts through, but then there's going to be a gap there. So sealing the motors one thing with silicon, which I'm going to do, but then how to seal it to that. I mean, there is a gasket, a foam gasket then that goes, this is the floor, my hands are the floor. So this sits on the floor and there's a foam gasket there, but how to seal that bit, I need to look at that. Um, before we put this all back, finally back together. So rather than put the original rusty nuts back on, I thought I'd put some stainless ones on. Bling it up a bit. Obviously. And just got quite stiff as I tighten these up, the armature. So, well, I don't want to do Ooh, yeah, there you go. Hmm, interesting. Speed control. It's 1.4 amps, 1.45 amps at 12 volts. 1.37, 1 1.45, yeah, 1.45. So what's that? So that's uh, 18 watts or so. 12 volts, 1.4 amps, so 18 watts. Um, fairly powerful motor pretty standard for with you know for, for british cars of this period smith's motor um, but that seems to work fine um if we just push that on temporarily Whoa. 
We've really got some... Right, so, yeah, so the air's coming in the centre, which is what you'd expect, because that's the grill is there, and then pushing out the sides. There you go. I'm going to count that as a success. So I'm going to put this to one side now. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put it to one side, stop playing with it. And then um, next thing is I need to finish painting the rest of the... So this is the the heater box um, I've had this dipped in uh, evapor rust I need to strip the the rest of the paint off it uh, while brush it all and respray it so that's a pleasant job uh, and do the rest of it oh the, the other thing actually um, hang on so if you saw the previous video this is the the, the rear tray that goes under the motor so this is what um, what this motor sits in right there or, or more, more like that um, so this is the original tray now <laughs> this is really rusty and I've put the, I've had this in rust remover and um, you may not be able to see this but basically it's it's like Swiss cheese it's full of holes uh, it is so thin on the bottom that um, it's just rusted through so you know as the rust remover is working it's removing everything because it's all rust uh, so um, I need to get a new one well not a new one of these because you can't get new ones but I need to get a replacement one of these that is in better condition I did think about it's only the bottom so I did think you know I could make an aluminium plate um, and kind of use panel adhesive or something to glue it in place but um, I'm just going to try and replace the the whole thing uh, so that was a bit of a, a shame the lid's fine but the, this bottom uh, is just so many holes in it um, I bought a new resistor so again if you saw the previous video this resistor sits in here this is for the two-speed motor um, <clears throat> so in one of the switch positions the the motor power uh, comes through here this sits in there to cool it and I guess you may as well use the warmth from this to, to warm the air um, that's rusted through so I have a new uh, two and a half ohm resistor so when I get a new one of these that will be bolted in there and uh, wired up so something else I've got um, I think that's it for now um, yeah I need to get I, I contacted David Green and he said he's got some of these so I need to to pay him to get that sent um, but a lot of this is just uh, it's just really manky it needs needs de rust it all needs de rusting the front one as well and respraying so that's uh, what I'm going to be doing so um, probably hopefully next week I can do a video show some more progress on the fuel pipe uh, replacement um, this heat is going to still faff faffing around with this is going to take a few more days or weeks but as I say I am on holiday the week after next uh, which means nothing if you watch if you're not watching this video now but um, there should be some more progress should be another video or two or three uh, in the next couple of weeks. Speak to you again soon.